Hello guys, welcome to my channel Aviation for GK. First of all, I would like to thank you for visiting my channel and watching my first video. Since it is my new channel and this is the first video, I would like to introduce myself in short. My name is Sheikh and I am an EASAB-1 Qualified Aircraft Maintenance Technician. To start with my first video, I want to share, how can someone become an EASA licensed aircraft maintenance engineer? As you might know, this is one of the best rewarding careers in the aviation field. If you love to travel and explore the different countries, and at the same time, you are looking for a career path, which can make this happen, then aircraft maintenance engineering is the right career for you. When I started my journey to become an aircraft engineer, I had no clue, what does aircraft maintenance engineering or EASA mean? But anyhow, I put my efforts and time to research about it and started my education as an aircraft maintenance engineering under EASA approved training organization. So, for this reason, I decided to make a video to help you guys choosing your career path as an EASA licensed aircraft maintenance engineer. Before I start, I would like to request you to subscribe to the YouTube channel and press the bell icon, so that you won't miss any of my future videos. So let's start with today's topic, how to become an EASA licensed aircraft maintenance engineer. So, first of all we'll go through the table of contents. In this topic, we will be discussing, what is EASA? What are the basic educational requirements? What are EASA license categories and their educational and professional requirements? And finally, what does EASA Part 147 Approved Training Organization mean? And how you can find them on the EASA website? So, let's start with, what does it mean by EASA? The EASA acronym stands for the European Aviation Safety Agency and it is the Aviation Regulating Authority, which develops and implements safety rules for the smooth operation of civil aviation. Here, you need to remember that EASA does not issue the license. The license issuing authority is NA, which is National Aviation Authority or also known as Competent Authority. So, when we submit the application for EASA license, we need to submit it to the NA or the Competent Authority located in any of the European countries. Preparing the application and submitting it to the NA is another topic, which I will be discussing in my future video. So, let us see what are the basic educational requirements before you either start your career as an apprentice or enroll in EASA Part 147 Approved Training Organization. Once you complete with your high school, you need to make sure you will be choosing a science stream. Where you will be learning, physics, mathematics, and chemistry as your major subjects. You can also choose an Aircraft Maintenance Engineering Diploma course. In addition to this, you must have a sound understanding of the English language. Since it is a universal language, all the aircraft manuals are written in English, and you should be able to read and understand the manuals to perform the aircraft maintenance tasks safely. Now, let us have a look at what are the EASA license categories, so, once you have your basic education, this the point where you need to choose, which category aircraft maintenance license you want to pursue. The types of licenses are as follows, number 1, CAT A license, number 2, CAT B license, and CAT B type has subcategories. They are CAT B1 for Mechanical Stream, CAT B2 for Avionics Stream, and CAT B3 for Non-Pressurized Aircraft with a maximum takeoff mass up to 2000 kg. And finally, you have CAT C License Holders, who are also known as Base Maintenance Certifying Staff. So first we'll see about CAT A License. The CATA license engineers are also known as line maintenance certifying staff or mechanic or in some places as technicians. 
This type has four subcategories and they are Cat A1 for aeroplanes fitted with turbine engines, Cat A2 for aeroplanes fitted with piston engines, Cat A3 for helicopters fitted with a turbine engine and Cat A4 for helicopters fitted with a piston engine. So, for example, if you gain experience on aeroplanes fitted with a turbine engine, then you can apply for EASA CAT A license with A1 ratings. So, now let's discuss CAT B1 license. The engineers, who hold this type of license are known as Aircraft Certifying Staff, or Airframe and Powerplant License Staff. CAT B1 also has four subcategories, which are similar to CAT A license. And they are, CAT B1.1 for aeroplanes fitted with turbine engines, CAT B1.2 for aeroplanes fitted with piston engines, CAT B1.3 for helicopters fitted with a turbine engine and CAT B1.4 for helicopters fitted with a piston engine. Among all these four categories, CAT B1.1 license is the most commonly used. The reason for this is, nowadays almost all of the passenger aircraft are fitted with a turbine engine, as they are more efficient engines. Hence the demand for CAT B1.1 license engineers is more compared to other types of license holders. The difference between CAT A and CAT B1 license is, in CAT A license, you can only certify certain tasks and you cannot certify the task performed by the other mechanic or technician. And also this license is restricted to line maintenance only. But if you hold CAT B1 license, you are allowed to certify the aircraft both in line maintenance as well as in base maintenance. With the help of this license, you can also certify the tasks performed by the other mechanics or technicians. So, now let's move on to CAT B2 license. This license holder is also known as Aircraft Avionics Certifying Staff. They are responsible to certify electricals and avionics components of the aircraft, and finally, CAT C license holders, who are also known as Base Maintenance Certifying Staff. CAT C license holders are responsible to certify the aircraft in base maintenance once all the maintenance tasks of an aircraft are completed. The duties and privileges of all these types of license holders will be explained in the separate video. Now we'll see, what are the professional qualification and experience required to become an EASA licensed engineer. So if you want to pursue, CAT A or CAT B 1.2 or CAT B 1.4 or CAT B 3 license, there are basically three ways to get it. So first, let us consider, you do not have any approved training qualifications other than your basic education, you need to gain at least three years of maintenance experience and need to successfully clear the EASA modules relevant to the license type you are applying for. In the second route, you can reduce the required maintenance experience to two years, if you complete the approved training qualification which can be a diploma in aircraft maintenance engineering. So, further, if you want to reduce it to just one year experience before you apply, you must need to complete the basic training course of particular license type in EASA Part 147 Approved Training Organization. Similarly, if you want to pursue CAT B1.1 or CAT B1.3 or CAT B2 license, then you must need to satisfy the following requirements. In the first route, you need to gain at least 5 years of aircraft maintenance experience on operating aircraft and complete all EASA modules relevant to the license type. This is when you do not have any basic training qualifications or you can complete a diploma in aircraft maintenance engineering to reduce the aircraft maintenance experience required from 5 years to 3 years, and further, if you want to apply for your license with just 2 years of experience, you just need to complete a basic training course of required license type in the EASA Part 147 approved training organization. The most important point to be noted here is, that the completion of EASA modules of the relevant license category is a must in all the available routes. 
Now let us see, what are the requirements need to be fulfilled before applying for a Cat C license. Basically there are two routes to apply for this license category. In the first route, if you already hold either Cat B1.1 or Cat B1.3 or Cat B2 license, you can apply for a Cat C license if you have at least three years of base maintenance certifying experience. Or if you hold Cat B1.2 or Cat B1.4 license then you need at least five years of base maintenance certifying experience before you apply. In the second route, if you hold the graduation degree in aeronautical or other related to aircraft maintenance, which must be recognized by the NAW and you have cleared either EASA CAT B1 or B2 modules then you can apply for CAT C license, once you gain 3 years of base maintenance experience in which at least 6 months as a supervisor or observer of base maintenance tasks. Finally, let's see, what does it mean by EASA Part 147 Approved Training Organization. This organization is also known as an educational institute that provides, basic theory and practical experience for either all of the license categories or any of them. This EASA Part 147 ATOs, also provides type rating courses for basic license holders. Please check the link in the description to find the EASA Part 147 ATOs and the brief pictorial paths to pursue the license on the EASA website. So, thank you so much, for watching this video. If you think this information helped you, then please like and share this with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to the channel. If you have any queries, please comment or you can reach me out on aviation4gk at gmail.com. So, once again thank you so much, see you in the next video.